God be with you. Welcome back to another virtual church service. My name is Nick. I am the minister here at Red Deer Lake United Church. And we are an affirming church that gratefully gathers on Trinity Seven land. And what we are all about is finding in the way of Jesus a new way of being human and alive in this world. A way connected to God, each other, and ourselves. A way that transforms this world into the world that God wants it to be. A world where everyone has enough and everyone has a place. So as we start our time together, know this. Whoever you are, wherever you're at, whatever you're bringing in with you, whenever you are watching this, you are welcome, you are wanted, and you are accepted here. You are enough. And so know that as you show up. Because that's all it takes. All it takes is us showing up with all that we are, with all that's going on in us and around us, and asking God to say, hey, do your thing. Do your thing of transforming, of healing, and renewing, and restoring. And that's the plan for this morning. We're going to open up and ask God to do her thing. And so let's begin with this. Let's begin with a prayer, a prayer that's meant to help us show up, to be here, and to be open. So again, thank you for being here. Whoever you are, may you know that you are enough. May you know that to be here is glorious. And let's say a prayer together. Let's pray. So God, here we are. All kinds of people from all kinds of places showing up with all kinds of stuff. But as we do show up, as we dare to open up and be here, uh, may you do your thing. May we breathe you in and may you go to work. So God, as we start our time together, we turn ourselves in this time over to you. And we ask this in the beautiful and liberating name of Christ by saying together, Amen. Let's raise our voices singing this majestic hymn which celebrates life in all its forms and honors Creator God who gave us life and works through us and in us as a spirit. So one of the things that we try to make room for every single week here at Red Dirt Lake United Church is, is make room for spiritual practices. And spiritual practices, when we talk about those things, we're not just talking about the things that ground us in God's presence, that ground us in love and peace. But we're talking about the things that help us be transformed, that help us become the kinds of people that God calls us to be. People of love and generosity, of peace and justice, of wonder and curiosity of strength and courage. 
We're talking about the practices we do that shape us into those kinds of people. And the practice we're going to do today is not just one we can do here together. It's something you can do throughout the day. And it's a great one as we head into the summertime. And we're talking about the practice of Sabbath. And whenever we use the word Sabbath here in church, we're talking about rest. And the Hebrew word is manuha. We're talking about deep, soulful, transformative rest. And the practice we want to invite you into today is that rest. And not the rest from our physical work, not rest from the things around us, although that can be great rest. But today when we talk about rest, we're talking about resting from the things inside of us. We're talking about the things that we carry that take up so much energy and so much time. We're talking about the things we don't want to carry anymore. And maybe you know what I'm talking about already. We're talking about how we view our body and the shame that we sometimes carry. We're talking about things like perfectionism. These ideals we have that consume so much time and energy, but no matter how hard we work, we never reach them. We're talking about the false narratives, the false identities, and the false values that we've been given. We're talking about the roles that we've been given that we can only get love and welcome and belong in when we fit into them. We're talking about those things. These things that we carry that take up so much time and energy that leave us feeling soulfully exhausted. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we all have those things that we carry. And for this spiritual practice, I'm going to invite you to put them down. I'm going to invite you to take a break from those things. Because it's in the break, it's in the rest, it's in putting those things down that you can hear something really powerful and so deeply true. You don't need to live like that. You don't need to live like that. You don't need to carry those things. It doesn't need to be that way. The hope is that through this spiritual practice of putting those things down, of saying, no, I don't want to carry those things anymore, is that you can find the grace the love, the courage, and the peace to put them down, to say, no, I don't want to live like that. And instead of spending all that time and energy on those things, you can spend all that time and energy on things that are more life-giving, things that are more true, things that are more you, things that pull you into life instead of out of it. And so whatever your thing is, I invite you to put it down. As we listen to this next song, I invite you to put it down, to rest from those things, even if it's just for 10 minutes, even if it's just for one minute, even if it's just for 30 seconds, even if it's just for one breath, I invite you to practice putting it down because you don't need to live like that. You don't need to live like that. You don't need to carry those things. It doesn't need to be that way. We're not meant to live that way. We're not meant to carry those things. So may you rest from those things. And through this rest, may you find something new, something beautiful, something more you. And so my friends, as we enter into the Sabbath rest, this deep, soulful, transformative rest, may grace and peace be with you. With that in mind, let us find a space where we can feel our bodies relaxed and where we connect with our breath. You may sing along, meditate along, just listen, whichever is comfortable. Time for working, time for playing, time for rest. This body is holy, holy, holy. This body is holy, holy, holy. 
And so right now in our country, it is National Indigenous History Month. And the way we're going to honor that today is by saying a Mi'kmaq prayer. And the Mi'kmaq, they are a nation from New Brunswick, where I grew up. And they had this beautiful prayer of asking the Creator to come into our hearts, to heal us, to make us new, and bring us together. And I want to invite you to say this prayer with me and with them. This act of solidarity and respect and oneness with our indigenous brothers and sisters. So knowing that we are all one knowing that we are all together, knowing that as people of faith, we are called to be allies and advocates. Let's say this prayer together. And would you pray with me, please? And let us pray. Creator, open our hearts to peace and healing between all people. Creator, open our hearts to provide and protect for all children of the earth. Creator, open our hearts to respect for the earth and for all gifts of the earth. Creator, open our hearts to end exclusion, violence, and fear among all. Thank you for the gifts of this day and every day. Amen. God be with you. Get ready for another sermon. So do whatever you have to do. Get a coffee, press pause, bathroom break, do whatever. Because we're about to get into our sermon for today. And we're going to start off with something other than a scripture reading. In fact, there's not going to be a scripture reading at all today. So get ready to write those emails saying, a sermon is not a sermon unless it begins with scripture. Because instead of going that way, we're going to go this way. And we're going to begin with a parable. Now, parables are a huge part of our tradition. Jesus uses them all the time. And parables are important to know, um, it's important to know how to hold them. Because what parables aren't are, are stories with one point. Let's start again. Parables aren't stories with one point. There's not one takeaway. There's not one meaning. Parables, rather, are so much more powerful than that. Parables are stories that abduct us. They're stories that pull us into new ways of seeing and thinking and moving. They're stories that elicit conversation, that spark wonder and curiosity, that disrupt conventional wisdom. They're stories that, as one friend would put it, to help us be transformed people who are transforming the world. So it's no wonder Jesus used them. That's what Jesus is all about. He's about helping us be new kinds of people creating a new kind of world. And so when we hold parables, we hold them loosely, we hold them openly, and we look for them to give us some sort of shocking, disruptive wisdom that we can then rumble with and have transform everything about us. And so this story that we're going to hear is not one from Jesus, but it's from one of my teachers, Peter Rollins. And if you're looking for someone to really give you a nosebleed, if you're looking for someone to help shift how you see the world and how you practice your faith, he is the guy to check out. You can check out his podcast or his books. They're all great things. But this is a parable and it goes like this. Once there was a priest and the priest was working in her office one day when someone from the church community barged in and said, oh my God, we have to do something. This is so terrible. There's a family who lives down the street. One of the parents has lost their job. The other is looking after their aging parent. The kids have nothing to eat. It's the middle of winter, and they don't have any rent. And the landlord, they're about to kick them out of their house. So we, we have to save them. We have to do something. And so the priest said, of course, we'll do something. We'll, we'll feed them. We'll pay the rent. Uh, go figure it out. And the person was about to leave, and the priest said, oh, by the way, how do you know the family? And the church member said, oh, I'm the landlord. Right? So good. And I love this parable for a few reasons, but here's the biggest reason. As much as we're like, ooh, that landlord, ooh, they're a bad dude, aren't we all the landlord? Because when crisis hits, when bad things happen, when wrongs need to be righted, when it all hits the fan, what do we do? We do what Mr. Rogers taught us to do. We look for the helpers. We yell for help. We try to get someone to fix the problem. Or, or if we're being super honest, we don't do anything and think, hmm, hmm, 
Well, maybe someone else will do something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we all do that, don't we? We all look for the helpers. It's a very human thing to do. We've all been that landlord. Because helping is scary, isn't it? Not only is it overwhelming and risky, but we also have all those narratives inside us. Those little voices that say, who, who are you to help? How could you possibly do something? You're not good enough to help, right? Yeah, we all have those things going on within us. We've all been that landlord. We've all looked for the helper instead of helping ourselves. But here's the thing. And here's the thing we need to remember when bad things happen, when it all hits the fan and wrongs need to be righted. Our job isn't to look for the helpers. Our job is to be the helpers. It's our job to be the helpers, not look for the helpers. When Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, he's not raised up as the hero because he went and asked for help. He's raised up as the hero because he went and helped himself. When Jesus was teaching the disciples and said, oh, when someone comes up and asks for food or clothing or housing, he doesn't say, oh, point them to the shelter. No, he says, oh, give them the shirt off your back. Give them some food. Clothe them. Home them. When Jesus is giving a sermon on the mount, he doesn't say, blessed are those who go and find the peacemakers. No, he says, blessed are the peacemakers. Go and be the peacemakers. Because that's what love does, isn't it? Love moves. Love does. Love responds. And that's why Jesus is so powerful. He's that love embodied. He would always, when help is needed, move, listen, and do. Because that's what love does. That's what it means to be human. To be human is to be a helper. When things go bad, when things go sideways, when wrongs need to be righted, be righted, our job is to be a helper. And now there are many ways to help. And today we're going to look at four different ways, four different ways of being a helper. And today we're going to talk about lamps, lifeboats, ladders, and Lucy's. And none of these are particularly mind-blowing. None of these are like so high up there we're going to be like, oh my God. But rather what these are are images. These are some images we can keep in our pocket to not only remind us that we're called to be helpers, but almost more importantly, to help us figure out what kind of help is needed. Because that's the thing, right? That's the thing about help. Um, Sometimes the kind of help is almost more important than the fact that we're helping. And so this is to help us figure out what kind of help can we be when we're called to be helpers. And before we get into that, just one little disclaimer, one thing for us all to remember. Uh, Let's remember that helping requires consent. Just because someone needs our help doesn't mean we should help. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. When we go and be sources of help in the world, sometimes it's really important to ask if someone needs help first. And then with their permission and their guidance, we can then figure out the kind of help we actually need to be. Because sometimes our good intentions actually lead to bad impacts. So having that consent, having that permission, and having that guidance can be the most important thing we can get when we're trying to be the helpers that God calls us to be. But anyways... Four ways, that's eight ways, four ways of being helpers in the world. And the first way, lamps. Now, what do lamps do? They provide light. They help us see. They show us where to go. One of the best ways we can be helpers is by being a lamp, by being a light in the world and helping people see where they're trying to go, which is beautiful, right? There's power in that. We know how powerful it can be to have a light in the darkness. But here's the thing about being a lamp. You can only be a lamp to somewhere you've already been. You can only light up to light up the way to a place you already know. You can only be a lamp to somewhere you've already been, and you can only light up the way to a place you already know. Right? Yeah. You can't give directions to somewhere you've never been. You can't say what to expect if you've never experienced it. Because you can still be a light and help someone get lost. 
you can still be a light and take someone off in the wrong direction. So in order to be a lamp, in order to help people along on their journeys, it's going to take a lot of two things. It's going to take a lot of humility, and it's going to take a lot of vulnerability. It's going to take a lot of saying, you know what, I don't know that place. I've never been there. I can't help you. And it's going to take a lot of, it's going to take a lot of saying, oh, I do know that place. I've been there myself. I know how hard it is. Let me help you along the way. Yeah, being a lamp takes humility and vulnerability, which are two really hard but really essential things to be lamps. So as we think about lamps, here are some questions for you. Now, where have you been? What hard-fought road have you traveled down? What journey have you made? And what road can you help light up? Oh, and also, if you're someone who is looking for a lamp, if you are someone who is lost and looking for a light in the, in the darkness, here's some advice that I wish someone gave to me. Never take directions from someone who's never been where you're trying to go. Yeah. Never take directions from someone who's never been where you're trying to go. Look for someone who's been there. Look for someone who has had a similar experience as you. That's the light you want. That's the lamp you want to have with you. Look for someone who's been where you want to go. So that's lamps. That's how to be a lamp. Second thing to do is how to be a lifeboat. Because what do lifeboats do? They support. They keep afloat. When we're lost at sea, they keep us out of the water. And one way we can be helpers is by being lifeboats. A while ago, a friend was talking about this life-changing crisis he had. This time in his life when everything got uprooted, when everything fell apart, and he was left with almost nothing. And we were talking about how he got through it. We are talking about how he persevered and got to the place he is today. And he said the thing that helped him the most, the thing that kept him out of the water, the thing that kept him afloat, was his friends. Because he knew that he had to do the work. He knew he had to get to shore. But it was his friends who helped him make sure he didn't drown. And I think that's beautiful. And that's the thing about being lifeboats. Because it's not up to us. It's not up to the lifeboat to paddle. It's not up to us to calm the storm. It's not up to us to save the person. That's not our job there. That's not the role that we play. But rather, the only thing we can do is lifeboats. The task, the job, is to be that supportive, encouraging, and buoyant presence in their life. Because that's the thing, isn't it? And maybe we all know this deep, deep down. Maybe we've all experienced this. When the storms are raging in us and around us, as much as we would love for someone to come and do all the work and take us home and take us to shore, the thing we really need, the thing that would be the most help, is to not be alone. Is to have someone with us, being that encouraging, buoyant presence. Someone who can ride out the storm with us, keeping us above water, keeping us afloat, making sure we don't drown. Yeah, lifeboats are important. We need lifeboats in our world. So as we think about lifeboats and being helpers, let's remember that. When it comes to being a lifeboat, it's not about bringing them out of the water. It's about being in the water with them. It's not about doing, it's about being. It's not about saving, it's about supporting. It's about saying, you got this. You got this. You can do this. Keep on going. Keep on struggling. I am with you. You are not alone. Yeah, so lamps, lifeboats. And the third one, ladders. A third way we can be helpers in the world has to do with ladders. Because what do ladders do? They, they help us get places. They help us move up and to reach places and things we normally would not be able to reach and go. And one way we can be helpful is by getting off our ladders. And note the difference there. Note we're not saying one way we can be helpful is by being ladders. We're saying the way we can be helpful is getting off our ladders. And that's a really huge nuance, and here's why. We live in a world where some people are given ladders and some people aren't. 
The world we live in is built on ladders. Well, the people who get those ladders, well, they can reach certain places and they can go and do certain things. And the people who don't get their ladders, well, they're just out of luck. They'll never be able to reach those things. They'll never be able to go to those places. And the truth is, our world is built in a way where if you are a person of color, if you are LGBTQ, if you are a woman, if you are differently abled, you don't get a ladder. And the world works against you. There are some places you just can't go and some things you can't do. And that's how privilege works. Privilege is being given a ladder at birth and having the world built for ladders. And one way we can be a helper is getting, is getting off our ladders because the thing is, that ladder never belonged to us. It never did. That ladder actually belongs to everybody. It belongs to everybody because regardless of anything, everyone deserves access to those places. Everyone deserves access to those things. Our ladder belongs to everybody because their lives matter too. They're our neighbors. We're supposed to help them get to those places and help do those things because everybody's meant to be up there. And that ladder belongs to everybody. So as we think about how we can be help, again, some things to think about. Now, what ladders do you have? What privilege have you been given? How can you get off your ladders? What does it look like to recognize that that ladder that you've used, that ladder that you've benefited from, that ladder that has gotten you to those places and gotten you those things, that actually doesn't belong to you. It belongs to everybody, and they have just as much a right to use it as you do. What's it look like to share that ladder? Yeah, huge, huge questions to think about. So lamps, lifeboats, ladders, and finally the last way we can be a source of help in the world is by being a Lucy. And now of course, when we talk about Lucy, we're talking about the character from Peanuts. We're talking about Charlie Brown's arch nemesis. The girl who, when she is not making a buck, offering child psychology on the street corner, she is always yanking away the football from Charlie Brown, making him fall. And one way we can be a source of help in the world is by being a Lucy and yanking the ball away. Because sometimes the best way we can help is by breaking the rules and by being a subversive source of disruption in the world. Because the thing is, and we don't like to admit this, Jesus is not all about being polite and nice. What Jesus is all about is about transformation. It's about making us whole and doing some interior work. It's about making our world whole and doing some exterior work. It's about transforming all of us and all of this into a world where everyone belongs, everyone has enough, and everybody has a place. And sometimes, and by that we mean all the time, that means disruption. That means breaking the rules. That means playing a different kind of game. And sometimes the way we need to help is by being a source of that disruption, by breaking the rules and playing a different kind of game so we can help that transformation happen. And that can look like all kinds of things. It can look like those TikTok teams who last week bought up all the tickets to a political rally, stealing its thunder and its momentum. That can look like the marathon runner Ivan Fernandez. And Ivan Fernandez, his story is amazing. He was doing a marathon. He's in second place. The finish line was just around the corner. But the man in front of him, a Kenyan, he couldn't understand English and he was confused by the road signs telling him which way to go. And he started running away from the finish line. But Fernandez knewing, knewing, knowing that he wasn't going to win, knowing that he was going to come in second place, instead of letting him go off in the wrong direction, he grabbed the Kenyan and pushed him in the right way, yelling at him to go this way. And he lost the race. He lost the race. He lost when he could have run one. And he was asked about this later on by some reporters, and his response is amazing. He says, I didn't want to win that way. I didn't want to play that game. He deserved to win, and my job was to help him do it and not take that away from him. He didn't play by those rules. He disrupted the game. Yeah, there are all kinds of ways that we can be Lucy. There's all kinds of ways we can disrupt the game because sometimes, 
Some things are more important than winning. Some things are more important than coming up on top. And that thing for us as people of faith that's more important is that world of justice, of peace, where everyone has enough and everybody has a place. So as we think about being helpers and we think about being Lucy's, some things for you to think about. What balls can you yank away? What source of disruption can you be? What rules can you break? How can you assist in the transformation of others, yourself, in that world? Yeah, big, big questions again. So lamps, lifeboats, ladders, and Lucy's. All great ways to be helpers in this world. So as you head out into the next week, the question is yours. Now, which one can you be? Where can you be a helper? How can you be a lamp, a lifeboat, a ladder, or a Lucy? How can you help change others, change yourself, and change this world into the one that God wanted it to be? So as you go and rumble with that, may grace and peace be with you. That is everything from us for this week. But before we let you go, a couple things to let you know about. Um, we're going away for two weeks. Uh, we are taking a much deserved and well needed break. Well needed, much deserved, we're taking a break. Uh, our staff and volunteers have been working so hard to make these services possible, and we're going to give them two weeks off. And so for the next two weeks, uh, you're going to be on your own. Do whatever you want to do. We'll send you some options of places you can go for worship. We'll send you some spiritual practices you can do. But do whatever you want. Take these two weeks and make the most of them. And then we'll see you back online on July 19th. And that's when we're going to launch our new Summer Express services going live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Not 10.30, 10 a.m. And our hope with these things is to still give you your dose of church, but to allow you to go off and enjoy your sunny summer Sundays. So until we see you again on the 19th, thank you for being here. We hope you got something good from this. And whoever you are, whatever is next, wherever you're going to go, may you go in peace. May you go in love. May you go and do it loudly. We'll see you again in two weeks.
Testing, one, two, three, check, 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 check. Okay, a way that transforms our world more like, no, sorry. A way that leads into, no. We'll have a 20 minute outtake blooper reel. God be with you. Oh, sorry. And a way that transforms this world more, damn it. So we begin by breathing in that spirit. We begin by putting our feet on, no, let's start again, sorry. That spirit that makes all things new, that spirit that makes us full of peace. So I want to check in with you. I want you to check in with yourself. How are you doing? Because it's been, no, let's start again, I don't need to read. But I want to check in because, in, no, sorry. And so whoever you want to start again. It's really important to hear stories and, no, let's start again. Keep thinking about it. Keep remembering about the stuff. No, let's try again. A world where everyone and ever. oh, sorry, let's start that again. Hmm. Especially with stand-up, if it's a, uh, when we do sermons, um, what they're, no, let's try again, sorry. Because what that says is, no, I'm going to stop this. I don't like that. And I say disappointing because what Jesus says next is not what we want to say. Is not what Jesus, shit. Because maybe that's a, let's press pause. And so once again, thank you for being here. We'll see you again next week. Um, I'm going to stick around on the comments feed if you're watching. No, let's start again because that's not going to be wherever you're at, whatever's going on in your life. May grace and peace be with you.